Welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha, a podcast shared by David Roylance. This podcast is dedicated to guiding you to completely eliminate the discontent mind and the suffering it causes by attaining enlightenment. Learn and practice the teachings of Gotama Buddha that will guide you to fully attain a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy. To support this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha or visit buddhadailywisdom.com where you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online learning resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Now, here's our teacher to share more. สวัสดีครับ. Hello and welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha. Today is our restart of the group learning program. It's a completely new start here at the beginning of the year. It's on Sundays at 9 o'clock Thai time where we're going to be sharing a seven-month program which is called the group learning program. It's so wonderful to see a bunch of new faces that are logging in to Zoom and I'm sure there's some people out there in YouTube and Facebook and also listening to this on the replay through the podcast and other places that serve out the replay. I would like to just welcome all of you guys to our restart because over the next seven months I'm going to be sharing with you a really nice foundation and framework of the path to enlightenment, helping you to understand this path to enlightenment that the Buddha shared over 2,500 years ago, where you can actually gradually learn and gradually practice his teachings to experience this gradual progress as the mind gradually awakens more and more to this enlightened mental state. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what is a Buddha, what is the path to enlightenment, and a little bit about what is enlightenment itself so that you're going into the program with that understanding. And then we're going to spend the bulk of our time talking about what the program is, why somebody might be interested in actually studying this particular program, and then how to actually be successful in learning because this program is really designed for independent learners to come to a teacher and gain insight. Nobody can give you enlightenment, but instead you learn, you practice, and you progress on this path to enlightenment. There's nothing on this path to enlightenment that you should believe. The Buddha's teachings aren't about belief and you believing his teachings. I'm not interested in you ever believing anything that I have to say because belief isn't going to actually lead to an improved condition of mind in this enlightened mental state. Instead, what you do is you learn his teachings. You don't believe them, but you learn them. And then you start reflecting on them and you independently verify whether they're true or they're false. And then you start practicing the teachings. And this is what transforms the mind and moves it closer and closer to enlightenment. If you were to just believe, 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 you don't know what's true or false. And the Buddha never said during his lifetime to just believe me. Instead, he encouraged people to come examine his teachings and investigate his teachings because he knew that if you investigated his teachings, close enough with the guidance of a teacher that you would then understand the true wisdom of his teachings and you'd be able to train your mind to get to this enlightened mental state. So as you learn, as you reflect and independently verify, and as you practice the teachings to train the mind, you will see this gradual improvement to the condition of the mind. But it's important that you do the work of not believing and you do that work to learn, reflect, and practice. You've essentially been doing this already in other parts of your life that you may not actually have been aware of. The Buddha's teachings, I refer to them as the natural laws of existence. Well, this natural law of gravity, you actually have done this learning, this reflection, and this practicing to awaken the mind to the wisdom of the natural law of gravity. And this is the same thing that you'll need to do with all the other natural laws that the Buddha taught. He didn't teach about the natural law of gravity. He taught about all these other natural laws that when your mind is struggling and having difficulties, when you're experiencing anger and sadness and frustration, frustration and other discontent feelings, this is because the mind is unawakened. It doesn't have the wisdom of these natural laws of existence that the Buddha taught. And this is the same thing that happened with the natural law of gravity, that at one time in our life when we were children, we didn't have the wisdom of this natural law of gravity. So we oftentimes would fall down and 
bust our knee or elbow or hit our head. We would break our toys. We would knock over glasses of water or milk or something like that. And then we would cry and we would be upset. We would walk outside and trip over our shoelaces and fall down. And we would have all kinds of difficulties in the world because we didn't understand this natural law of gravity. We struggled and we made unwise decisions because of our lack of wisdom of this natural law of gravity. Well, the same thing is happening with these natural laws of existence that the Buddha taught is because there's this lack of wisdom of the natural laws of existence, we struggle, we make unwise decisions that lead to unwholesome results. Well, as we were a child and we were learning about this natural law of gravity, we didn't believe that it existed. We saw the truth for ourselves that, yeah, we fell down and we hit our head and we busted our elbow and we knocked over things and they broke. And slowly but surely, we learned to tie our shoes really tightly. We learned to look at the surface of the sidewalk before we went outside so we wouldn't trip. We learned how to even ride a bike and get on an airplane and travel all over the world for some of us. So with this wisdom of the natural law of gravity, we started making wiser decisions that produced more wholesome outcomes. Because when we lacked wisdom and we didn't know the truth, we made unwise decisions that led to unwholesome results. So the same thing is happening when the mind is experiencing anger and sadness, frustration, irritation, annoyance, guilt, shame, fear, boredom, loneliness, shyness, resentment, jealousy, grief, any kind of displeasure or uncomfortableness or unsatisfactoriness in the mind. This is all coming from a lack of wisdom of the teachings that would liberate the mind from these strong feelings that an unenlightened mind is going to experience. So when you don't believe the teachings of the Buddha, but instead you learn them through guidance of a teacher, which I'm going to share with you how to do that, and you reflect on these teachings and start independently verifying them to be true, and then you practice them, you see the truth for yourself that the condition of the mind is gradually improving. Things that once arose anger, for example, as you learn and practice, there might be some frustration. And then you learn and practice more, and then there's maybe some irritation. You learn and practice more, maybe the mind is annoyed. You keep learning and practicing and training the mind, that same exact thing can happen. And then the mind's just completely peaceful and joyful. It no longer gets shaken up or discontent or becomes uncalm. But all of that is only experienced if one spends the time and effort to learn and practice and gain the wisdom of this path to enlightenment and then gradually trains the mind to awaken it to this enlightened mental state. So that's what I'm going to be helping you to do over the next seven months of this group learning program. And if you learn in this program and you decide you would like to move on, there's another program called the Pali Canon in English Study Group. That's a year and a half program because what you're looking to do is build a life practice for yourself. These are teachings that most of us didn't learn growing up, or if we did learn, they were very basic, very simple teachings. But here in Thailand and here in Asia, where the Buddha's teachings exist, there's individuals who grow up learning these teachings and they have this control of the mind they have this discipline of the mind there's this calmness and this composure that exists in a well-trained mind that it doesn't get shaken up by various things that are going on in the world but in the unenlightened state without the wisdom of how to actually train your mind in these natural laws of existence then it's easy for the mind to get shaken up but as you train you'll see that those things won't occur anymore as we go in our class today and as we go forward in our future classes over the next seven months, there's opportunities for you guys to ask questions. I'm gonna pause at different times. If you're in Facebook or YouTube, you can put your questions into the comment section and one of our moderators will see that and then they will ask your question in class and I'll reply to your question. And you can ask follow-up questions that way as well. For those of you guys that are in Zoom, you can also put your questions into the comment section in the chat and the moderators will see that. Or what some people prefer to do is in Zoom, you can electronically raise your hand. There should be a place on the dashboard of Zoom where you can electronically raise your hand and one of the moderators will call on you at the time of questions and you'll be able to get help with the questions that you have because that's an important part of learning is that you have the opportunity to ask questions and get clarity and understand. So when we come together like this as a class, 
I don't look at this as a lecture or even some people use the word discourse, which the Buddha did during his lifetime. It's not a sermon or anything like that. What it really is, is it's a discussion where I'm sharing teachings with you and helping you to understand these natural laws of existence. And then you have the opportunity to ask questions and get help. There's various resources that I'm going to share with you that's part of this program that you'll be able to use in order to help you outside of class, like books and audiobooks and things like this. But the class time is a really helpful time to come together and hear the teacher teach the teachings and for you to get clarity on anything that you've read or anything that you're learning or anything that you hear me talk about in class. So feel free to put those into Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, or raise your hand in Zoom and ask any questions that you like. I'm going to share with you firstly what is a Buddha to help you understand what a Buddha is before we even get started on this journey so that you can start with kind of a baseline understanding of just understanding what a Buddha even is because if you haven't studied this before you may not have that understanding. What a Buddha is, is there a human being who has independently discovered the path to enlightenment and they've attained enlightenment without any help of any teachers or any guides. So they've independently discovered the teachings and independently trained their mind to get to this enlightened mental state. A Buddha arising in the world is very rare. The last one that the world is currently aware of existed over 2,500 years ago. And the world is currently unaware of any Buddha that has existed since then. So he arose and awakened his mind through training his own mind. He discovered these teachings that I'm going to share with you all by himself. Now, you can get to enlightenment, but you wouldn't be doing it on your own. You're going to need help and you're going to need guidance along the way. So one of the criteria that makes a Buddha a Buddha is that they actually do this work by themselves and figure out the path to enlightenment. So once they awaken to enlightenment and they know that they've independently discovered the teachings that lead to enlightenment because they're no longer experiencing any discontent feelings, they then share their independently discovered teachings with any students that are interested in learning. They dedicate the rest of their life to sharing their teachings to help many people get to enlightenment during their lifetime. So during the lifetime of an actual Buddha, they will help countless people get to enlightenment during that lifetime. And then they will leave their teachings in such a condition that countless more people can get to enlightenment after their death. And this is exactly what we observe with Gautama Buddha's lifetime or the Buddha's lifetime. He spent his first two years attempting to get to enlightenment with the help of teachers, but they were teaching him all these aesthetic practices that disparaged his body, like starving the body, hanging himself upside down from trees, piercing his body with metal implements, laying on a bed of nails, doing all these harmful things to the body because people at that time thought that the way to get to enlightenment is to cause physical pain to the body. And if the mind can transcend that, then they thought that they could get to enlightenment. And after training for two years with two separate teachers and being designated as a master of those individuals teachings, the Buddha, who wasn't yet a Buddha, said that his mind wasn't any more content or calm or peaceful than it was when he lived in the royal palace as a prince. So he ultimately goes out on his own for four years in the forest and deeply works with the mind and ultimately gets to this point where he's trained the mind to get to enlightenment. And he did this all on his own. And he knows that he actually got to enlightenment because he no longer experienced any discontent feelings like anger, sadness, frustration, and others. He knew what those feelings felt like in the past because he experienced those. But once he trained his mind over that period of time on that independent journey, he realized that he had discovered the teachings that lead to enlightenment. And he dedicates the rest of his life to sharing those teachings. He gets to enlightenment at the age of 35, and he spends the next 45 years sharing his teachings with others. And during his lifetime, countless people get to enlightenment. And one of the ways that he actually preserved his teachings during his lifetime is he had people recite his teachings. Every two weeks, his students would come together and they would do chanting and they would word for word recite his teachings. And this is the way they committed it to memory. And then after his death, they then got together about three months after his death, about 500 of the enlightened beings out of these countless enlightened beings, and they start documenting his teachings. 
This is now today called the Pali Canon. This is the original source teachings of the Buddha, that everything that I share with you goes back to this original source teachings. There's 45 large volumes of books that are very thick, and the topics that they wrote down is the things that he talked about during his lifetime. And there isn't really any kind of organization to this Pali Canon, but it was just written down. In the book series that I share, it's been organized in a way that helps you to build this framework of understanding, this foundation with this particular program of the group learning program in the first book, volume one. And then the Pali Canon in English study group goes through volumes two through 13, where it fills in and helps you to further understand this path to enlightenment more and more clearly. So during the lifetime of the Buddha, countless people get to enlightenment. And then after his death, there's been countless more people that have gotten to enlightenment through the teachings that were preserved. So he meets all these three criteria of what a Buddha is. He independently discovers the teachings. He dedicates the rest of his life to sharing those independently discovered teachings and countless people get to enlightenment. And then he preserved the teachings in such a way that countless more people can get to enlightenment after his death. So that's what a Buddha does. And he talks about how rare it is for a Buddha to actually arise in the world. You and other people in the world can get to enlightenment as an enlightened being. But at that point, you wouldn't be considered an actual Buddha. You would be an enlightened being or what's also referred to as an arahant. And the way that you do that is what's called the path to enlightenment. Essentially, what the path to enlightenment is, is this journey that you're taking to build up a life practice where you're growing and learning and evolving, doing this inner work to gain wisdom or knowledge that develops into this purity of mind where you've trained the mind and develop this life practice where now instead of functioning with a lack of wisdom of the natural laws of existence, which we've done all throughout our life before encountering these teachings, now when we don't believe these teachings, we learn, we reflect, and we practice through this gradual training, this gradual practice, we see this gradual progress where the mind gradually moves to this enlightened mental state where you can now make wise decisions about how you train your mind, how you interact in the world, and you start experiencing improvement to the condition of the mind. And this is how you know that you're learning the truth is that things that once arose anger in your mind, for example, now it doesn't experience that anymore. The mind's completely peaceful and joyful in those same situations. So as the mind moves closer and closer to enlightenment with this gradual training, gradual practice and gradual progress, you can see the truth for yourself that it's working. So it's not believe, 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 and hope that you believe properly and that when you die, everything works out because at that point it's too late. Instead, what the Buddhist teachings are is you learn now, you don't believe, you learn now, you reflect now to independently verify the teachings and you practice the teachings now and you see the results now. That's how you know that it's actually working and that these teachings are the truth because you see the condition of the mind gradually improving. You might be curious of what is enlightenment? Well, we actually have a full chapter that we're gonna cover in about six weeks from now that's gonna go into detail about what enlightenment is. This is chapter three of the book that I use for this program where we're gonna talk in detail about what enlightenment is and what it isn't and how one would actually progress to enlightenment. In fact, that's what the whole program is about, is about progressing to enlightenment. But just so you know a little bit at this point of what enlightenment is, is an enlightened mind is gonna be peaceful, calm, serene, and content with joy. It's no longer going to be shaken up. It's not gonna experience those discontent feelings like anger, sadness, frustration, irritation, annoyance, guilt, shame, fear, boredom, loneliness, shyness, resentment, jealousy, stress, anxiety, grief, misery, despair, displeasure, even the slightest uncomfortableness. An enlightened mind doesn't experience this. So the mind is peaceful, calm, serene, and content with joy because it's been purified of the conditions that are causing it to be shaken up. 
there are certain pollutants in the mind that we're going to talk about as part of this program. And these pollutants are causing the mind to be shaken up. And when it's getting shaken up like this, it's because of those pollutants in the mind. So as you train in understanding what those pollutants are and you get rid of them out of the mind, now you're removing the conditions that are causing the mind to experience this shaking up. And that's what this path is going to help you ultimately experience where the mind no longer experiences these discontent feelings. And because of your wisdom on this path to enlightenment, what you'll observe is that you can get to a point where your relationships, both personally and professionally, are blossoming, where you no longer experience this roughness and this harshness or this struggle in your personal and professional relationships. That's not all going to occur in seven months. It's going to be a life practice. It's going to take many months and a few years for you to gradually train your mind and get to this more improved mental state. But this program is designed to give you a solid foundation, this solid framework that now you can continue on with that, where some people will actually take this program more than once. And some people will choose to move into the polycanon and English study group where they're gradually learning and gradually training the mind and they're seeing the results in that it's improving the condition of the mind. So it's learn, reflect, and practice. And as you're training the mind, you see this improvement as your personal and professional relationships are improving and as the condition of the mind is improving. Because whenever you're struggling in life, whenever you're having difficulties, whether it's with these discontent feelings or some decisions that you're struggling with as part of your personal life or your professional life, this is just because the mind lacks wisdom. It's lacking certain wisdom. And what we tend to do is we feel uncomfortable with those painful feelings that we experience and we tend to push people and we push the situation out of our life. Or we kind of retreat, we kind of run and hide because we don't like this struggle that we're experiencing. And as long as we continue to do these things in our life, we're ensuring that this struggle will continue. Because if we shrink back from the struggle and we run away from the struggle, then the mind doesn't cultivate the wisdom that it needs in order to overcome that obstacle. Or if we push a person out of our life, thinking that they're causing us to be angry or frustrated, we're not actually solving the real problem, which the real problem is deep inside your own mind, which we're gonna explore next week to help you see very clearly how the mind is actually causing itself to be angry and sad and frustrated and all these other discontent feelings. Because in the unenlightened state, what we tend to do is we tend to blame other people for our anger. We say, you're making me angry, or you're annoying me, or you know, you're know you irritating me, and we blame other people. But then, because we're not looking at the true problem, we never actually solve the problem. The mind just keeps getting angry and frustrated and irritated over and over and over again, because the real problem isn't other people and what other people are doing. What this path is about it's about training your own mind. And I'm gonna help you to see very clearly in four simple statements next week called the Four Noble Truths, where you can see the problem in the unenlightened mind, you can see the cause and what's causing those discontent feelings, you can see the elimination and what's actually needs to be done in order to eliminate the discontent feelings, and then the path forward, the entire life practice that you'll need to develop in order to gradually train the mind and move closer to this enlightened mental state. So with all of that said, I'll go ahead and pause for questions and at the same time just once again welcome you if you've joined since I started off the class. I would like to welcome all of you whether this is your first time learning with me or whether you've been learning regularly and you're now repeating the program again. I'd like to welcome everybody and open up to any questions that you might have. You can put that into Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom or you can raise your hand electronically and ask any questions about anything that I've just shared so far. Doesn't look like there are any questions at this time, Teacher David. Okay, so let's go on and talk about the actual program itself. So let's talk about what the group learning program is so that you can start to get an understanding of what you are you know, potentially going to be going forward with over the coming months. What the group learning program is, is it's this live 
interactive in-person or online classes to learn the path to enlightenment. It's in person here in Chiang Mai. I teach at a temple here and there's students that joined me this morning for the restart of that program. And if there's anybody who's traveling in or out of Thailand or they're here in Thailand, you're welcome to come for those classes because they're completely in sync with the online version as well. In fact, some of those students that came to the class at the temple this morning said that they would like to join online too because they learned a lot this morning and they're like, hey, I would like to actually do the class again. So there's this in-person and online classes and if you're joining online you can join through zoom through facebook and through youtube and it's going to be on sundays at 9 p.m thai time for the online version and whatever time that is for you you just figure out 9 p.m thai time if you're going to join online whatever time that is for you you can join live on facebook youtube or zoom here in thailand i teach it at 9 a.m in the morning so if there's people here in Thailand that will join me at the temple at 9 a.m. I also teach on Wednesdays at the same times, 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. But if you're working at that time, if you're not able to make the Wednesday class, it's okay because they're recorded and you can digest that on Wednesday evening or Thursday or Friday or Saturday or whenever you have time in your day, you don't necessarily have to always attend live because you're not going to always be able to attend live. There's going to be some Sundays and some Wednesdays that you're not going to be able to attend live at 9 p.m. Thai time. So therefore, you might decide to use the replay or the recording either on Facebook, YouTube or the podcast. On Sundays, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going chapter by chapter in this book titled Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Enlightenment. The first four weeks, we're going to be doing a really deep dive into the path to enlightenment, which is the Eightfold Path. This is the core central teaching that the Buddha taught, which is your life practice. This is the path to enlightenment. And all the other teachings plug into that. So I'm going to do a three-part series where I break it down into three individual sections, which is called Wisdom, Moral Conduct, and Mental Discipline. And I'm going to help progress you through that each Sunday over the next three Sundays. This is a three-part series. And then on the fourth Sunday, we're going to be talking about the four stages of enlightenment because that eightfold path, those three weekends actually lead up to the four stages of enlightenment. So in four weeks over the course of multiple Sundays, you're going to have a really good perspective of what the path to enlightenment is and how to actually progress towards enlightenment. Then we're going to start with chapter one of this book and progress forward from there each week doing a new chapter on Sunday. So you can either read before and or after class. You know how you learn best. Perhaps you'd like to read first and then you come to class with certain questions. Some people might decide to take the class first and then read the chapter afterwards. And then some people might decide to read before and after as well. You'll have to decide for yourself what works best. What I suggest that you do is you just read little by little. And I'll explain that here in a moment of how to do that. On Wednesday is what I do is I share meditation. So we're going to start off on Wednesday with a four part series on breathing mindfulness meditation to help build up your practice that you can learn breathing mindfulness meditation. This is the primary form of meditation that the Buddha taught as part of the path to enlightenment. You wouldn't be able to meditate your way to enlightenment but you also wouldn't be able to get to enlightenment without meditation either. You're gonna need a combination of understanding all the different factors of the path to enlightenment, which includes meditation as well. So Wednesdays, I teach breathing mindfulness meditation, loving kindness meditation, and Buddhist chanting. And there's a four part series on breathing mindfulness meditation on each Wednesday over the next four Wednesdays. Then there's a four part series on loving kindness meditation right after that. Then there's a four part series on Buddhist chanting that's going to be right after that. And again, if you can't make the Wednesdays, then you can watch it on the replay or listen on the podcast. And then after we get through those, then we'll just be rotating between breathing mindfulness meditation and loving kindness meditation as we come together on Wednesdays to encourage, support, and motivate each other in our meditation practice. So you're welcome to tune in live for those or watch the replay. 
There is a Facebook group that you may already be a member of or that you're looking to potentially become a member of. The Facebook group is an online community. It's an online classroom essentially where students are asking questions through a post or through follow-up questions to a post. Sometimes Buddhist groups are set up where students are teaching each other and sometimes it just becomes one big argument in some of these Buddhist groups. But the way that our Facebook group is set up is all the students are there to learn and any post or any comment is to ask questions to the teacher. So a student will post a question and then I will answer it and the other students aren't going to teach you. It's only going to be from the teacher. Other students might ask a follow-up question, just like if we're in class. So it's an online version of an online classroom where through text you can ask questions by posting those or asking follow-up questions. And you can even read the replies that I write to other people because other people will ask questions that you haven't necessarily thought of and you can actually learn from the replies that I share there. And there's going to be daily posts in that Facebook group with the content from this book for the group learning program. And then there's going to be daily posts from the Pali Canon in English study group as well. And if you're reading the book, you won't necessarily need to read the post of the book. But some people like to read the post as they come out, which is just the chapter broken up into seven posts, essentially what I do. But if you're reading the book, you won't necessarily need to read the post of the book, but you might decide to read some of the posts from the students and the replies, depending on how much time you decide to devote to your learning. That's another place and another avenue for you to learn. Then there's a video library in YouTube. There's a podcast where each one of our classes, like right now, this is getting recorded and it'll get posted up there in about three days after the class. So you will be able to access the podcast. And then there's the audiobook of the book prior to this one. There's an audiobook. And I'm actually working right now on the audiobook for volume one, the book that we're using for this class. I'm currently working on the audiobook for this. And as I create these resources, I give them away at no cost. So you can download them and access them at no cost. And then there's even quizzes that if you would like to take a quiz in order to confirm your understanding, this isn't something that I grade or that I even look at or anybody else looks at, but it's just something to confirm your learning and something that you can choose to use where there's about 20 questions per chapter that you can go into that online quiz and then you can take a few minutes to answer those questions and then you kind of walk away from each chapter having confirmation that you've learned what you needed to learn. So between reading, between coming to class, perhaps listening to the videos or podcasts or the audiobook, whatever it is that you would like to do in terms of engaging in the discussion that's happening in Facebook, you might decide to take some quizzes or not. It's up to you how much of these resources you decide to actually involve with. You know, if you did everything and digested everything, it would be a full-time job. So you're going to need to decide how much time you have to devote. It might just be coming to class every week and that's all you're able to do. It might be coming to class and reading. It might be coming to class and adding some other things to it. As you decide to get involved with the resources and the material, the more that you get involved with it and you decide to dedicate to learning and studying, the more benefit that you're going to actually see. There's ongoing support in this program and beyond. You can ask questions in these in-person and online classes. You can ask questions in the Facebook group. You can send me a private message through Facebook or email or any other way that I communicate through the various apps. Or you can even schedule a personal discussion. If you go to our website, buddhadailywisdom.com, you'll see a link where you can schedule an online Zoom session together where you'll come in and we'll be able to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion. And all of this stuff is being offered at no cost to you. You can choose to schedule as many of those appointments as you like, and then we can spend some time talking about where it is that you are in your practice, any clarification that you need. If you're having certain personal challenges of how to apply these teachings to a certain situation that you're having in life, you can reach out and schedule one of these sessions and I'll be able to talk with you during those sessions and help you along. So you have all these different ways to get help because you're going to probably need that as you go. 
You can post questions in Facebook. You can ask questions in the online classes. You can send me a private message or you can uh, schedule one of these personal guidance sessions. And these are all ways for you to actually get help in the group learning program. Then let's talk about you know why somebody might be interested to actually take this group learning program because you might be wondering you know whether or not this is the right program for you. Well, if you're interested in attaining a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy, where it no longer experiences any discontent feelings and you've eliminated those discontent feelings like sadness, anger, frustration, irritation, annoyance, guilt, shame, fear, boredom, loneliness, shyness jealousy, resentment, stress, anxiety, grief, misery, despair, displeasure, even the slightest uncomfortableness, then this is the program for you. If you're done feeling angry and you're fed up with being sad or frustrated or irritated and you'd like to move beyond this and experience a more fulfilling life where the mind can be peaceful and joyful permanently, no longer ever being shaken up ever again, that's what the path to enlightenment is for. And seven months is a really good start to get you started moving in the right direction. Again, you're not going to experience enlightenment in seven months, but you're learning the foundation, you're learning the framework, and you're building in this life practice that will help you get to that point. Because oftentimes we experience what we feel is problems. When the mind is unenlightened, we experience these problems and now we struggle and have difficulties. But what you will slowly start to see is that as you train in these teachings, you'll start seeing things as more of a challenge. And it's just a matter of acquiring the wisdom that you need to overcome that challenge. So like I mentioned, if you shrink back from the struggle, then the mind isn't going to acquire the wisdom that it needs. And it's going to keep experiencing the same struggles over and over and over again because it lacks wisdom. But when you turn around and you walk towards the struggle by coming to classes, by asking questions, by reading the book, by reaching out to your teacher by private message or scheduling personal guidance, then you're walking towards that struggle. You're working towards that challenge. And now you can cultivate the wisdom that you need in order to overcome it. And that's what this path to enlightenment is for so that you can face these challenges and overcome them with wisdom. And then you'll see that your personal and professional relationships will blossom. If you're having struggles in your relationship with your life partner, with your parents, with your children, your coworkers, your siblings, or any other people in your life, whether it's personal and professional relationships, you can actually work that out and you can improve that through gaining the wisdom and through training your mind as part of the training that the Buddha describes. And then you'll see this arising of this focus and this concentration, this clarity, this deep memory that you start experiencing as you're training the mind. Because when the mind is polluted, then it's muddled, it's lacking concentration, it lacks focus. Like now when I'm talking right now, your mind might be thinking about what you're gonna do after class, or it might be thinking about something in the past. And if your mind's doing that, this is quite normal for someone whose mind is unenlightened. But as you get rid of these pollutants of mind, the mind will become more focused and concentrated. It'll have clarity in this deep memory because you remove the pollutants or the conditions that are causing it to lack this concentration. Essentially, what the Buddha talked about during his life is he talked about bringing the mind to the middle and training it to perform optimally. Because your mind is like a musical instrument that if a musical instrument is tuned really tight and the string is tuned really tight and you pluck the string, it doesn't play the way that the instrument is intended to play. It doesn't sound right. Or if the string is too loose and you pluck the string, again, the instrument doesn't play the way it was intended to play. It only is when you tune that string perfectly in the middle and you strum the strings that this instrument plays the way it was intended to play and it has this beautiful music that comes out of the instrument. Well, the mind is exactly the same way, that when you hold on to things too tight 
or the mind is dull and lethargic or lacking motivation. It's not in the middle. It's not performing optimally. So what this path to enlightenment is, among everything else, is as you're training the mind, you're tuning the mind to come to the middle so it can function the way that it was intended to function, like that musical instrument. It's intended to play with its strings tuned and tensioned to a certain pitch. And when we tune the strings right to the exact tension and we strum it, now it plays beautiful music. And the mind is the same way. As long as it's got these pollutants, it's not going to have focus, concentration, clarity of mind and memory. But as you're gradually training this out of the mind, you'll see these qualities of mind come through. And then lastly, there's this cycle of rebirth that the Buddha taught. There are some people in the world that have independent evidence that the cycle of rebirth is 100% true. And those certain people know that to be 100% true. But a lot of us have grown up just believing that we only have one life. We don't actually have any real evidence that there is just one life. But there's a whole lot of evidence that you'll learn as part of this path to enlightenment that shows that the cycle of rebirth is 100% true. Now, when people start out learning this path, I don't tend to teach the cycle of rebirth early on because it really actually doesn't matter at this point. What's happened in the past in terms of countless rebirths, it's in the past. What may or may not happen in the future is in the future. What's important now is that you're in this human state, your mind is discontent, and you're interested to get rid of that. And in order to do that, the mind needs to come into the present moment. But when we get to chapter 20, I will share with you about the cycle of rebirth. I'll start introducing it to you there, but then in the Pali Canon and English study group, that's where we really get into the cycle of rebirth because that's a more appropriate time to really approach it. At this point in time, if you don't have 100% evidence that the cycle of rebirth is true, what I suggest you do is just set it to the side. No need to really confront that right now. Instead, just learn the core and fundamental teachings to gradually train the mind to awaken it more and more. And as you awaken the mind more and more, you might actually observe past lives. And as you're learning about the cycle of rebirth, you'll see more and more that it's actually true. And the cycle of rebirth can actually be used for motivation and encouragement. Because if you start to observe and understand that the cycle of rebirth is 100% true, and you realize that whatever you don't learn in this life, if you aren't cultivating wisdom and training the mind to get to enlightenment, you're just gonna have to come back and repeat it over and over and over again until you figure it out and you learn the wisdom that you need to learn in this existence and future existences, then if you know that you're gonna need to keep coming back and redoing it, then the wise person is gonna decide, you know what, let me do this now. I'm close to the teachings that here's a teacher. He's giving up his time and effort and energy and resources at no cost. He's sharing all of these things with us. Let me spend the time and dedication to actually work towards enlightenment in this life now so I don't need to come back and redo this over. Because if you think back to all the times that the mind has been angry or frustrated or irritated or maybe sad or stressed or having anxiety, during those times, you're really uncomfortable and people aren't typically interested to repeat those things over and over again. But that's exactly what will occur if we don't cultivate the wisdom that we need in this life to transcend all the obstacles and struggles and difficulties that we're experiencing. So you can overcome all of this through training the mind and gaining this wisdom, not believing in the cycle of rebirth, but when you're ready and at the appropriate time, you can then face it and then you can actually see the truth for yourself. But for now, we're gonna set the whole cycle of rebirth to the side, but just know that that's always there because the Buddha did teach this cycle of rebirth and we're gonna explore that at different times in this program and in the other program that you might choose to join at some point. You're going to be interested to get a version of this book called Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Enlightenment. This is the book for this actual program, and you can download this for free by going to buddhadailywisdom.com, and there's a link there that goes to free books, and you can just download it if you like, if you're okay reading an electronic version. If you'd like a printed version, you can actually go have it printed if you like, 
or if you have access to Amazon, you can order it online through Amazon. They have printed versions and they have Kindle versions as well. So if that's something that you would like to do, you can get it through Amazon. But all of these resources that I share, I share them at no cost, but of course, Amazon has a price that you would need in order to be able to get a copy from them. And they give you a nice bound version of it with nice large print that you're actually able to read. But if you like to go print it yourself, go for it. I don't copyright these teachings. These teachings are part of the teachings for humanity. They don't belong to me. They don't belong to anybody else. They're available for anybody and anybody. So that's why I just give these things away at for no cost so that you can have access to them and gain access to the teachings that you need to eliminate this discontent mind. The way that this works is each week we progress in the chapters in class. So these live classes, we're going to go chapter by chapter. And if you're here in Thailand, you can attend at the temple. But if not, you can join online through the live streaming or through Zoom. And once again, the in-person classes are at 9 a.m. The online classes are at 9 p.m. Thai time. So you'll just need to look at the time zone in your local time zone and figure out what time it is. And it seems like you figure that out for today. So you must know what that time is. If you're in a time zone that changes times for like spring or fall, Thailand doesn't actually change our time zone or our time during those same periods. So you'll just either have to subtract an hour or add an hour around that time frame whenever your clocks are changing. Our clocks just stay the same, so you'll just have to make that adjustment. And typically, as we're getting close to that, for like the USA, I know when that is. And I think Canada follows the same. I'm not sure if the UK actually adjusts their time or not, but you guys would know that for those of you guys that live in time zones that change. And like I mentioned, you'll just add an hour or subtract an hour to this time of 9 p.m. This is an independent study program. Even though we're coming together as a class, even though I'm here for you as a teacher, even though you're part of this community and this online group, and even we meet together in retreats here in Thailand and other parts of the world, and we come together in real life in terms of seeing each other you know, in flesh and bones. But always remember that this is an independent journey. This isn't a journey where people are judging each other and looking down on each other and trying to determine who's above another and who's below another. That's not what this Path to Enlightenment is about. It's about eradicating all of that stuff. You're on your own independent journey and you're gonna progress at whatever pace you choose to progress at. There's no race. It's not hurry up and get to enlightenment. It's gradual training, gradual practice, and gradual progress. But always remember that you're responsible for your own learning. Nobody's going to remind you to meditate. Nobody's going to remind you to read. Nobody's going to remind you to come to class necessarily. You need to have the independent self-discipline for yourself to be able to choose to do those things. And if you reside with this understanding that it's an independent journey with these resources being available for you and the teacher being available for you, then you decide what it is that you would like to get involved with in terms of the classes, the books, the audio books, the videos, the podcasts, the quizzes, asking questions in class or outside of class. That's all for you to decide how you would like to do that. And as I mentioned, there's absolutely no belief in these teachings whatsoever. Even the cycle of rebirth, you should never believe anything is part of these teachings. You're looking to have independent verification through your own direct experience of what these teachings are. And I'm gonna actually help you do this as part of the program. So next week when I start teaching you the three universal truths and the four noble truths and some other teachings, I'm gonna share it so that you can learn. So I'll be sharing teachings and you'll be able to learn them. Then I'm gonna share with you how you can independently verify those teachings. Then I'm gonna share with you how to practice them so that the mind can be transformed. So I'm gonna be doing this throughout the program where I'm gonna help you learn, I'm gonna help you reflect, and I'm gonna help you practice in class. But then you're gonna need to be doing that work yourself as well. I'm gonna point you in the right direction. I'm gonna show you the way, but then you're gonna need to actually decide to actually do that. So what my role is, is my role is to essentially 
put lights down along the path to enlightenment, illuminating this path to enlightenment for you so you can see it more and more clearly. I'm essentially holding the light and showing you the path to enlightenment because an unenlightened mind is in the darkness. They need to have a light to be able to see this path very clearly. So through the book and all the other resources and the classes, the personal guidance, I'm illuminating this path for you to help you see it more and more clearly. And you're probably going to need to read things more than once or may even have to ask questions more than one time. You may even go through this program more than one time. That's very common because it's oftentimes challenging to retain certain teachings when the mind is polluted because that deep memory isn't there yet. So as you go through the program once, you might learn, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30 percent of what's being shared. And then you're clearing out some of the pollution. And then you go through it maybe again. And now you have less pollution, so you're able to retain more. And you know more about the program, and you can ask certain questions. And now maybe you learn 60, 70, or 80 percent. There's some students that have actually taken this program every single time that I've taught it. This is the sixth time that I've taught this program. And there's actually students that have taken it all six times. I'm not suggesting that you necessarily need to do that, but just helping you to see that there's a certain amount of wisdom here that you're not going to be able to absorb in just one reading of a chapter or one time going through this program. You're going to need to really apply some effort and energy to work to make sure that you're independently verifying these teachings and you're training the mind. You're going to need to develop and establish a daily meditation practice of breathing mindfulness meditation and loving kindness meditation. So as I mentioned, the first four weeks, I'm going to help you build up your breathing mindfulness meditation. We're going to start that Wednesday. And again, if you can't attend live on Wednesday, you'll have the replay to be able to listen to that in YouTube or Facebook. The podcast won't get published until Saturday for that Wednesday class. So you'll probably look to the YouTube or Facebook version of that video. But what you would like to do is build up your meditation practice where you're regularly and consistently meditating over the course of your days. And this is going to help propel you closer and closer to enlightenment along with all these other teachings. And that first four weeks is meant to build up your breathing mindfulness meditation practice in class, but outside of class as well. And then we can add on to it with loving kindness meditation. And now we can build that up. And now with you building both of these two meditations up, you're going to be solving two of the three primary problems in the mind. And I'm going to discuss this when we get to chapter eight. It's called transforming the three poisons, craving, anger, and ignorance. These are the three high level problems that the Buddha discovered about the unenlightened mind. So I'm going to be explaining to you the problems that he discovered. And I'm going to be explaining to you the solutions of how to actually solve them. So there you will see the real results of training the mind and transforming it away from these unwholesome roots or these three fires or these three poisons. And now you can antidote those three poisons with the solutions, or you can uproot those three unwholesome roots and bring in the wholesome roots, or you can extinguish these three fires that are in the mind by now practicing the wholesome qualities that the Buddha taught in order to train the mind away from these pollutants. If you've learned in other programs or you've learned other teachings from Buddhist books or certain videos that you might have watched or anything, maybe even you've talked with friends or family about these teachings, what I would encourage you to do, even though I know this is going to be challenging for you to do, I would encourage you to set those things aside. Whatever you've learned up to this point, it's gotten you to where you are today, where you're now learning with what's called the words of the Buddha, the original source teachings. Most people in the world, out of all the people who are learning Buddhist teachings, they don't actually learn with the words of the Buddha. This sounds kind of strange when you hear it the first time, because if you grew up in another tradition, maybe like a Christian tradition, where there's Bibles everywhere, you know, even in a hotel room, there's a Bible. But keep in mind, the teachings of the Buddha are in 45 large volumes of books. I actually have one of them right here. 
It's a huge, huge book. You know, it's probably about four to six inches thick. This is just one of them, and there's 45 of them. And it costs a good thousand dollars to actually purchase an entire set of these books. The average person in the world doesn't have that kind of money to spend on a set of these books. So most people in the world don't have access to the original source teachings. And whatever you've learned in the past, it's led you to where you are, but it hasn't led to your enlightenment yet. That's why you still have discontentedness of anger and frustration and other discontent feelings. So there are certain things that the mind currently feels that it knows that are false beliefs or misunderstandings or misperceptions that you're going to need to be willing to let go of. And then there's new wisdom that you haven't learned about the path to enlightenment yet that you're going to need to bring into the mind. I am sure that I'm going to be sharing with you things that you've never learned about the teachings of the Buddha before, and they're going to most likely conflict with what it is that you've shared in the past or that you've learned in the past. But remember, I'm encouraging you not to believe anything that I share, and I'm encouraging you to investigate and examine the teachings that I share. So the things that your mind's currently holding on to, that's a misperception or a misunderstanding that I'm suggesting to you to set aside or that you're going to need to let go of, you're going to let go of that potentially with the wisdom of the words of the Buddha by penetrating into his original teachings and independently verifying them, not believing them. Then you can see the truth for yourself of what's truly causing the discontentedness so that then you can actually eliminate it. But as long as your mind is holding on to the things from the past, it's not going to be able to learn this new wisdom and let go of these misunderstandings and misperceptions. So I will share with you in this program and in others and in all the books and resources, the words of the Buddha so that you can see what he did teach and what he didn't teach. Because since his death over 2,500 years ago, there's been constant changes that people have made. This is called impermanence. And some people actively made these changes. And other times it's just by this oral tradition of 2,500 years, there's just been gradual changes. It wasn't necessarily anything malicious. I'm sure there was good intent behind it. But the only way that you're going to know what the path to enlightenment is, is to get in touch with the true teachings of the actual Buddha. And the way that you do that is you go back to the original source text, which I'm sharing with you for free, that you don't need to actually go out and purchase this. And then you'll actually be able to see what he did teach and what he didn't teach. And you're not believing those words in the book. You're just learning them. You're not believing my words in classes. You're just learning them. And then you reflect on them to independently verify. And then you practice. And this is where you see the improvement to the condition of the mind. So these 45 volumes of books called the Pali Canon, there's a team of people here in Thailand, about 100 people that went through and read all of those various books and chapters, and they've extracted the teachings into a consolidated, organized book series. And then when I came in contact with that, I then brought it into updated word choices, and I organized it some more. I added some chapters that I knew of from the Pali Canon. And now we have this 13 book book series that is going to be very informative to help you see very clearly what the Buddha taught and what he didn't teach. Essentially seeing these lights along this path where now the path to enlightenment has been illuminated because you're now able to actually see very clearly what the path to enlightenment is because you're studying with the words of the Buddha and you're studying with a teacher that can provide you guidance. So whatever you've learned in the past, be thankful for that, have gratitude for that, be respectful of that, but just know that it hasn't led to your enlightenment yet and you're gonna need to set some of those things aside and some of the things that I share are gonna conflict with what you've learned before. But I think that's, that's actually a really good thing. If you learn with me and I'm teaching you everything that you already know, you have no use for me whatsoever. I'm completely useless to you because I'm just teaching you everything you already know. But if you're sitting with a teacher and you're reading materials and you're learning in a class of things that you don't know or things that conflict with what you already know, 
This means that there's something new that's being offered to you that your mind doesn't yet know. And this is where you don't believe it. You independently verify it, and then you can see the truth for yourself. So if you're studying with me, and over the course of these seven months, I'm sharing with things that are different than what you've learned before, this is really beneficial for you. And in those situations, what I encourage you to do is ask questions. You can say, David, why is it that you teach not to label our thoughts when we're meditating. I was taught in the past that if I was experiencing anger, to label it as anger, and then that helps me. Or I was taught to observe my thoughts in meditation and then just not allow the mind to hold on to them, but just observe them. Or, you know, I was taught one thing or another. If you are experiencing that, you can ask me, you know, David, why do you teach it this way? What is it in the words of the Buddha that I can independently verify that what you're sharing is the truth? Because every single thing that I share with you, I've confirmed in four different ways. One, it's in the original source teachings. It's in the Pali Canon. Two, I didn't believe the Pali Canon. I learned it for myself and I saw that it transformed my mind. Three, I share the teachings with students now for several years, and there's students who report to me that yes, what they're learning is improving the condition of their mind, and they're experiencing improved personal and professional relationships through training their mind in the teachings that I'm sharing. And then the fourth way is that living here in Thailand, I oftentimes come in contact with Thai people who learn that I'm sharing the teachings of the Buddha. And they will ask me, you know, what do you teach for meditation? Or what do you teach for the Four Noble Truths? Or what do you teach for that? And I will share it with them because they can speak English, some of them. And then when they hear what it is that I teach, they're like, you know, I was just at a temple for two weeks and I spent this time at the temple and there's this enlightened master monk there that everyone in the community, we know he's enlightened and you're sharing and teaching the exact same things that I learned at that temple. And this is a confirmation for me that what I'm sharing is what the Thai people learn and what these enlightened master monks share. So the first one is that I've confirmed it in the Pali Canon, the original source teachings of the Buddha. The second one is that I practiced it for myself and independently verified that it leads exactly where the Buddha says it leads. Then three, I've been sharing it with countless students over my teaching career and I see that students are getting closer and closer to enlightenment as well. And perhaps even some of them are even close to enlightenment or enlightened themselves. And then the fourth one is that Thai people share with me that what I'm sharing with them is the same things that they're learning with their enlightened master teachers and monks and people that they know to be enlightened. So if there's something that I'm sharing that isn't quite sitting with you or it conflicts with what you've learned before, that's a really good thing. And just ask questions to seek clarification and understanding and find out and understand why is it that David is choosing to teach it this way. And you can ask me questions to understand that rather than perhaps getting frustrated or irritated that what I'm sharing is different. Instead, ask questions to get clarification. And then lastly, the last thing that I'll share before I'll just open up to any questions and we can spend whatever amount of time you'd like to round out the rest of our class answering any questions that you guys have is just remember in terms of anything that you ever learned in your life, you've never accomplished anything through complacency, whether it was learning to read and write, whether it was learning some skill, uh, no matter what it is that you've learned in life, it always came through gradual training, gradual practice and gradual progress. And whenever the mind was dull and lethargic and complacent and you didn't apply effort to something, then it didn't amount to anything substantial. You didn't experience this wonderful or magnificent result because the mind was complacent in trying to do that particular thing. These teachings are exactly the same because then when you apply the time, effort, energy, and resources and you're not complacent, 
but you arise this energy and this effort to learn and practice and really get involved in what it is that you're looking to accomplish, which perhaps might be enlightenment here, then you've experienced the benefits of those results. You learned how to read, write, and speak English because you consistently work towards it. Or some skill, if you do computer programming, or if you're an auto mechanic, or a welder, or if you're a construction worker where you build houses or you build things, It took gradual training, gradual practice, and gradual progress, and now your life is better off having learned those skills. So this particular program is exactly the same way, is that you will get out of it what you put into it. And if you arise effort and energy in the mind, and you investigate the teachings, and you gradually work towards the improvement to the condition of the mind through training the mind, both in class and out of class, then you'll experience results of the mind gradually awakening. And you'll know that for yourself as these discontent feelings are gradually diminishing. So let me turn over the rest of the class to all of you guys with any questions that you might have. You can put those into Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, and our moderators will see that and be sure your question gets asked. Or you can electronically raise your hand in Zoom and ask any questions or follow-up questions directly. Thank you, Teacher David. Um, We have a few questions on Zoom. Joe asks, do you normally meet one-on-one with students and says thank you? Yes, this is something that I make available to students, but it's all based on your interest to meet with me. I don't schedule appointments with you guys. The way that this whole path to enlightenment works is the student chooses to reach out and ask for teachings and, and seek guidance. A teacher isn't going to you know, stand out on the corner and beat a drum and hold a picket sign and tell everybody they're doomed if they don't learn the Buddhist teachings. Or I'm not gonna you know, show up in your Facebook profile and start offering you teachings just because I see something that you're sharing there. Instead, the way that a student would learn the teachings is they actively reach out for help either in class or in Facebook group, private message, or you can schedule these personal guidance sessions. So I've got that mechanism set up where you can go to the website and you can click on a link and it'll show you the calendar that I have set up. And I've already put designated times in there based on my time zone here. And when you pull it up on your browser, it should automatically change to your time zone and show you what appointments are available based on your time zone, no matter where you are in the world. And then when you schedule that appointment, it'll come to me in an email And it's the same Zoom. You log in the same link and the same password. And then when you log in and I log in, then we're just here one-on-one. And you're able to ask me any questions and all questions you like. When a brand new student schedules one of these, I usually ask them a few questions up front to get to know them and, you know, ask them a few questions. But the way that these personal guidance sessions go is it's all based on your questions. So when you show up, it's whatever you would like to talk about, whatever questions you would like to ask. It's all based on the student choosing to reach out and ask questions from the teacher, either in class, in the Facebook group, personal message, or through the mechanism to have personal discussions. And then as I travel around and do retreats in different places, students will invite me into America or there's different places that I'll travel to to teach. Uh, You're welcome to join any of those and get help in person as well. Thank you, sir. Um, And then Nadia asks, who wrote the 45 volumes? This was the students of the Buddha during his lifetime right after his death, 500 enlightened beings got together. And there was one or two of them that were really instrumental in remembering the teachings, but all 500 of these enlightened beings agreed that these were the teachings that the Buddha shared during his lifetime. And we point to this Pali Canon as being the original source of Gautama Buddha's teachings, which dates back to 12 to maybe 1300 years ago, even though the Buddha died 2,500 years ago and they documented his teachings right after his death, the version of that that we have access to today dates back to about 12 or 1300 years ago. So we know that we've lost some of the teachings along the way. And this is why it's so important that you learn from an actual teacher, because you wouldn't be able to actually read the 45 volumes of books and actually get to enlightenment on your own. You're gonna need guidance and you're gonna need to ask questions. So it was his original students that wrote down his original teachings, and then they've been 
moved forward throughout all the years. And once somebody attains enlightenment and experiences that peaceful and joyful mental state, they're not interested in modifying the teachings. But what we see is that there has been lots of modifications and there's been different traditions that have spawned since the original source teachings of the Buddha. The tradition that I teach, it's called the Theravada tradition. This word Theravada means teachings of the elders. And we consider the Pali Canon to be the original source teachings of the Buddha. And we're not interested in changing or modifying his teachings. But then there's other traditions that came after that, that started modifying and changing his teachings. And one of the pure ways to be able to tell that the teachings of the Buddha have been modified is if you learn something that involves rites, rituals, ceremonies, or worship, the Buddha actually didn't teach rites, rituals, ceremonies, or worship. He didn't teach prayer, for example. It doesn't mean you can't do it, but he didn't teach these kind of things where there was rites, rituals, ceremonies, and worship. And a lot of the traditions that spawned later after his death, they started to implement rites, rituals, ceremonies, and worship into their teachings. But when you go back to the original source text of those 45 volumes that was captured by his students during his lifetime, but it was just after his death that they did it, you can see that the Buddha didn't teach any rites, rituals, ceremonies, and worship. And when you understand through next week's class what the true problem is of why the mind experiences discontentedness, you'll understand why rites, rituals, ceremonies, and worship won't actually solve it. So that helps you to understand who actually documented his teachings and helps you understand a bit about you know, why we look to the Pali Canon as being the original source teachings and why we're not interested in changing or modifying a Buddhist teachings. That would be very unwise because a Buddha is the originator, the discoverer, and the declarer of the path to enlightenment. Whatever he did is what leads to enlightenment. Any modifications of what people did after his death when they're changing and modifying his teachings, that doesn't lead to enlightenment. So by going back to his original source teachings, you can see what he did and he didn't do and what he did and didn't teach. And then you don't believe what you're seeing in the Pali Canon because there's been 2,500 years of history here. So that's why this book series that captures the consolidated version of the Pali Canon, and that's what I share with you for free, you don't believe those books, you don't believe the teachings that I share, and then through your independent verification and practice, you see the truth for yourself that it's working. Thank you, sir. Um, Tomas asks, Dear teacher, I do understand your teaching basics on Buddha's teachings. Not sure about it, however, I am interested to learn and expand my awareness and definitely would like to grow my spiritual intelligence side of my life does your teach can your teachings help me yes that's what this whole path to enlightenment is about is some people might call it a spiritual path or a spiritual life but remember it's not based on belief it's based on learning and practicing to train the mind and seeing the truth for yourself and through that independent verification you'll be able to develop this life practice or what some people might call a spiritual practice but remember there's not going to be rites rituals ceremonies or worship as part of that because in order to train the mind you need to do the work there's no right ritual ceremony or worship that's going to improve the condition of the mind. So those things that you might have done in the past in terms of rites, rituals, ceremonies, and worship, again, they led you to where you are today, but you're going to see as I start describing the problem, the cause of the problem, the elimination, and the path forward next week as part of the Four Noble Truths, you'll deeply understand what's actually causing the mind to be sad and angry and all these other discontent feelings. So there you'll be able to develop your life practice around the true path to enlightenment through not believing, through not doing rites, rituals, ceremonies, and worship, but through training the mind through the wisdom of the Buddha. Um, thank you. And Alaska asks, dear teacher, does the Pali Canon tell us how many Buddhas there were before Gautama Buddha? 
Yes, in the Pali Canon, this is the only conflict that I've ever seen in the entire Pali Canon, that there's documentation in the Pali Canon where the Buddha is reported to have talked about previous Buddhas before him. And he actually names those individual Buddhas and he even names the students that this individual Buddha was teaching as their main students prior to who we refer to as the Buddha or Gautama Buddha. But then there's another part of the Pali Canon where the Buddha is on record saying that he is the discoverer, the declarer, and the originator of the path to enlightenment, unarisen before him, meaning he was the first one to declare it and discover it. So this is a conflict in the teachings. But whether there was Buddhas before Gautama Buddha or not, it doesn't really matter. Whether he was the first Buddha or there were Buddhas before him, it doesn't actually really matter. And I'll explain to you why. For me, we have tangible proof that Gautama Buddha existed and he was an actual Buddha. And we have people that are getting to enlightenment today based on his actual teachings. So we know for a fact that he lived, he died, he taught, and his teachings lead to enlightenment. He was an actual Buddha. If there were Buddhas before him, wonderful. But we don't have any evidence of that other than the Pali Canon that says there was Buddhas. And it doesn't really actually truly matter because right now you're a human being, your mind is discontent, and you need to solve that problem. So whether there were Buddhas before Gautama Buddha doesn't really matter. The path to enlightenment is the path to enlightenment. And by learning that, that's what will actually lead to the improvement to the condition of your mind. So this is the only conflict that I've actually seen in the Pali Canon. And I look at it as it doesn't really matter because the teachings that are in the Pali Canon, irregardless of whether there were Buddhas before him, they lead to enlightenment. And I know this for sure. Thank you, sir. Um, Kyler says, hello, David. Can you explain what the purpose of a mantra is and the difference um, to a prayer? Sure. So in some Buddhist traditions, they do things that are called mantras. This isn't what the Buddha actually taught. During his lifetime, he taught chanting. And the chanting that he used was as an oral tradition that he was teaching the discourses. He didn't write anything down during his lifetime. So he would have his students recite his teachings word for word every two weeks as a way to remember the teachings, commit them to memory, and be able to recall them later. What we have nowadays is there's other traditions that are teaching various mantras. And some people will say, if you chant this mantra, you'll get an extra long life. Or if you chant this mantra, you'll get wealth. Or if you chant this mantra, you know, you'll get to enlightenment or you'll eliminate your bad gamma or something like this. But this isn't actually what the Buddha taught. And you can see this in his actual teachings when you use the words of the Buddha. And you don't have to believe that, which you see in writing. You can actually do it for yourself or you can look in a community of people yourself. If somebody says, here, chant this mantra, you're going to get an extra long life if you chant this mantra 10 times a day. Well, if that's the case, you should be able to look around in that community and you should see a bunch of people that are 150 years old, 200 years old, 300 years old around in their community because they've been chanting this mantra for however many years. And there would be a lot of people that are 150, 200, 300 years old. And if you don't see that, then you know the truth that it's not actually true. So this is how you independently verify it. So there's lots of things in the world that people share and they label it and they call it Buddhist teachings. But you can go back to the original source teachings and see what the Buddha did teach and he didn't teach. And then you can independently verify it through yourself by doing these kinds of things and observing in a community that, yeah, there's not 150, 200, 300 year old people in this community. So as part of this program, I will teach you chanting and I'll explain to you why I do chanting. The reason just to get to the heart of it that I do chanting is that it helps you to get more benefit out of the meditation itself. It helps to ease the mind into meditation and ease the mind out of meditation. But the real benefit is the meditation. There's nothing mystical or magical or superstitious or auspicious about chants. People have come to believe that but there's no actual evidence of that whatsoever, even though some people might actually believe that. Thank you, sir. And Miranda has a question on YouTube. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. On YouTube, David Federico asks, 
Due to my kind of job, it is possible I can't follow all the classes. Is this program still good for me? Absolutely. That's the reason why we record it. So every class is live streamed and you can attend it live like you are now. Or if your work schedule is changing, you can come back to the YouTube channel or into Facebook or to the podcast and you'll be able to learn through the recordings. And then as you have questions, you can either post them in Facebook or YouTube or you can reach out for personal guidance, scheduling one of those sessions, or you can send me a private message as well. So there's some people in addition to the live audience, there's people that are learning individually. In fact, there's more people that are doing it that way. There's oftentimes a combination of, you know, 50, 100, 200 people that come in and out of the live classes at different times. But there's hundreds and there's thousands of people who are digesting the podcast and the replay of the YouTube video and the Facebook. I think that definitely the live classes are absolutely ideal, but of course, not everybody's schedule is going to match up to what the live schedule is. So that's why I record them so that as you miss classes for any reason whatsoever, then you have the ability to listen to the replay on either Facebook, YouTube, or the podcast. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, There are no more questions on Facebook and YouTube. There are no more questions on Zoom. All right. Well, I'll just end class by sharing with you what we're going to do next week. And what that is, is next Sunday, we're going to start learning the Eightfold Path. This is the path to enlightenment. We're going to have that three-part series where each Sunday I'm going to build up your understanding of the core path to enlightenment, which is called the Eightfold Path. We're going to learn the three universal truths. We're going to learn the four noble truths, and we're going to start with right view and right intention, which are the first two steps of the Eightfold Path. If you've already got this book and you would like to go ahead and read, you would be reading chapter four in the first little bit of chapter five, which is right view and right intention. But we're going to actually be progressing through the book and covering chapters one all the way through all the other chapters, chapter by chapter. You don't necessarily have to read what I just shared with you at this point. It's up to you. In fact, even when we get to chapter five and chapter four, it's up to you whether you decide to read or not. It's always your choice, your decisions, and you're going to experience certain results based on the decisions that you make. So, If you would like to read ahead of the class or after class, it would be chapter four in its entirety and then a little bit of chapter five. And if you choose to read, what I suggest that you do is you read little by little each day. If you sat down and you read for an hour at a time, I would say that this would be too much. This would be like taking a big bite of pizza and trying to chew it and digest it all at one time. Instead, what I suggest you do is maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes a day just read a little bit and then sit back think about it go throughout your day maybe wait until tomorrow and read another 10 15 20 minutes this is like taking a little bite chewing it and then swallowing it and digesting it you'll find that as you gradually train the mind and you gradually learn this way that you're going to have more benefit Because if you try to take a big bite and you sit down and read for one hour at a time, that's a lot for the mind to process at one time, especially when it's still polluted with the pollutants in the unenlightened mind. So just take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, read a little bit. And then even though the mind might really want to continue reading, restrain the mind and pull it back and just read for that 10, 15, 20 minutes And then the next day, read a little bit more and a little bit more. And this way, you just gradually build up. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to be teaching you guys the breathing mindfulness meditation. And if you attend live, wonderful. If you can't attend live, then you've got the replays to be able to digest that at whatever time that you would like to digest it. I'm going to start from the very beginning, explaining to you what meditation is, how to learn it, how to understand it. I'm going to explain to you the why. What are the unwholesome qualities and the wholesome qualities that you're eliminating? And what are the wholesome qualities that you're cultivating? And then we're going to do an actual meditation together as part of that class. So even if you watch the replay, you can be doing the meditation in the replay with the actual class. And then what I do is just like this class is I open up to any questions that you guys might have in the actual Sunday classes as well as the Wednesday classes as well. 
So you're welcome to get help in all of those different ways. I would like to thank all the moderators for moderating. You know, Chrissy and Miranda are moderating today. We'll have different moderators at different times. We have a group of people that are actually moderating and they're here to assist us in keeping the class focused and moving forward. If you at any point decide you would like to get involved with moderating, you're welcome to let us know and you can come into the moderation group. Usually when you're going through the first time, a lot of times people like to go through as a student first before they actually choose that they might like to moderate. But if at any point you would like to do that, feel free to reach out and let Miranda know, me know, Chrissy or anybody else, and we can add you to the group and we can help you become part of the moderation team where there's somebody who's moderating the classes. And then lastly, I would like to just thank you all ahead of time for your dedication, for your determination, for your diligence in learning and practicing the teachings. Because as you learn and practice the teachings, this is the very best thing that you could actually do for your life, the life of those close to you and all of humanity. Because as you gradually train your mind and you move closer and closer to this enlightened mental state, it's going to help you, it's going to help all those close to you, and it's going to help all of humanity. So I'd like to just thank you ahead of time for any kind of time, effort, energy, resources, any kind of determination or dedication or diligence that you put into the program because it's helping you, it's helping all of those close to you, and it's helping all of humanity as we function in life in a better and better way, a more harmonious way. So I'll see you guys in one of these future classes. Have a very lovely and wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Sawadee Thank you for listening to this podcast. To provide support for this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha. To access more teachings, visit buddhadailywisdom.com. There, you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Remember to establish a daily, consistent meditation practice, along with learning and practicing these teachings. A well-developed meditation practice is the foundation in which to train the mind to attain enlightenment.